a tireless campaigner who is devoted to her family and her country. Well, Nigeria is a beautiful country. It's, um, it's a huge place with a lot of people. And I always compare Nigeria to an intricately woven fabric where we have so many different threads and it's a melting pot. You know, we have all sorts of different people. Born into privilege in Nigeria, Toyin Saraki is determined to help people less fortunate than herself. For me, it's a love of life. You know, I, I love life. Um, I, I can't stand the thought that people are dying or people are suffering when help is just a minute away. Toyin Saraki attends a book launch in London. People have gathered to talk about Monique and the Mango Rains, a novel which describes the work of a midwife in Mali. As a campaigner who has dedicated much of her adult life to improving infant mortality rates in Africa, Toyin Saraki has been asked to give a short speech at the start of the evening. A lawyer and an accomplished speaker, she was invited to the event by the White Ribbon Alliance, an organization which campaigns to make pregnancy and childbirth safe around the world. I caught up with her and asked why she had supported the evening. Well, today is the International Day of the Midwife, and the White Ribbon Alliance, who are probably the foremost advocates, actually, for maternal and child survival worldwide, and that they have the loudest voice, they've invited me to come and mark this day with them. I'm their national champion. For Nigeria and we've done a lot of work together and I just felt that it's very very important to recognize the role of midwives in keeping our women alive and even in the survival of children and um, in Nigeria we've been very active as well in recruiting more midwives into the public health service. I happen to be here so I was happy to attend. And the collaboration between yourself and the White Ribbon Alliance, that's, that's a pretty special bond that you have together. It is, definitely. You know, there's so much work to be done in the area of maternal, newborn and child survival. One person can't do it alone. So right from when I started doing this work, I tried to find strategic partners who were doing what they were doing very, very well. White Ribbon has a very strong global voice and um, they have champions from all walks of life in most of the countries in the world and together we've been pushing for Nigeria, the Nigeria Health Campaign, the One Voice, where we were asking the government to make a declaration that they would pledge $31 per capita towards health care for pregnant women and children and also to put 15% of the budgetary allocation towards public health for women and children and um, they endorsed that pledge so now we have more work to do to make sure that the promises are being kept and I think that if we do that, we will see a rapid drop in mortality, and I'm really looking forward to that. It was during a conversation we had with Saraki at her home in London that we discovered the very personal and heartbreaking reason why she first developed an interest in infant safety. When I was getting married in 1991, I was pregnant and I was expecting twins. And, you know, I had gone for my antenatal classes, or some of them, and I had my birth plan all planned in my head, and I had, you know, names, which I kept to myself as, as our culture. But a um, few days before my wedding, everything went awry. And basically, um, I began to hemorrhage. And on the eve of my wedding, I found myself in hospital in this situation which was beyond my contemplation. I never even knew things like that happened to people. Anyway, I ended up delivering that night and it was a very harrowing experience. I had uh, my daughter, naturally, which actually I had in my life, you know, it was epidural followed by, you know, I wasn't supposed to feel a thing, but I was the last person on earth who thought she would have a natural delivery. I had a natural delivery for my daughter and then my daughter's twin got stuck and um, there was this life-changing delay which meant that the next baby came out stillbirth 
and I had a lot of postpartum bleeding. And to cut a long story short, in 24 hours, I got married, had a child, and lost a child. From this tragedy, the seeds of an idea came about. Initially, it wasn't even like a foundation or anything at all. I just wanted to help people. So in the hospital where I had my baby, I told them that if anybody else comes and can't pay, please let me know. Whatever I can do, I will do it. The idea that an individual could be responsible for helping others may have been fostered during her childhood, a time that she accepts was both happy and a little unconventional. Well, I certainly knew that you know, I was very privileged. I don't know if I was really seeing the best of my country because what I would define as the best is to be able to see everything and to be able to make your own evaluations and learn from you know, what you see. My family background, my father is an industrialist, very, very active man, and he's supported by my mom, who, of course, I would think she's the most wonderful mother. My parents were... They still are, actually. I think they're modernists, and they're very, very liberal. We had um, a childhood where, quite unusual in Nigeria, we always sat with our parents for every meal. You know, a lot of our Yoruba structure, I'm a Yoruba by tribe, is very, very structured. If somebody is a minute older than you, you have to give that person a lot of respect. And in many areas, you don't speak to that person until you're spoken to. But with my parents, right from when we were very little, we would sit with them at table, and my father would bring a topic, and everybody was allowed to express their view, no matter how crazy or stupid or enlightened that view was. So I grew up in a place where it was always made very clear to me that my voice counted. And this is what I try to replicate with my own kids. And even I call my children now, you know, all the children of Kwara State and even of Nigeria and certain, you know, areas in where I work. I think it's important that people have a voice and that that voice be heard. After the break, Saraki opens her photo album and heart as she talks to us about family life. This is me and my daughter. And it's amazing to think you have them and they're so tiny and then one day they're all grown up and they're going off to university and they're doing their own thing.